This one is a very interesting one. I keep saying this one is an interesting one, but trust me, iter tools are used so vastly in Python programming. Let me show you how to use combinations from iter tools to solve a medium level problem from HackerRank. Stay tuned. But before I go on, if you are new, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back, mate. This is my ritual. I've got the HackerRank on the left hand side and I've got the Jupyter Notebook on the right hand side for me to teach you how to solve this. Here, I'm not really giving you the solution solely, but I'm also teaching you how to really tackle a problem. This one is called iterables and iterations. It's got 96.51% chance that you will get it right. Let me make it 100% for you. I'll extend this screen to read the problem. I'll go back to what it was before. The iter tools module standardizes a core set of fast memory efficient tools. So. Every time you want to do something repetitively, you're looking for something that is memory efficient. Remember iter tools. Let me show you the documentation from the Python official website. This one is an, probably an older version. If I go to the newer version, here we are in new documentation for iter tools, but I really encourage you to get on Google and search for iter tools Python and just make it your toiletry instead of Instagram feed. I really encourage you to do that. Back to this, what is the problem? Let me make it easy for you in my own words, but trust me, you wanna start reading and understanding the problem yourself. I'll just scroll down. The user will give you three lines of input. Line number one is an integer, is a number that tells you what is the size of the letters that the user will give you. Here, the user says four. So they will give me four space separated letters. If they tell me six, they will give me six of them. And then the next line will be the actual letters that are space separated. And that's very important space separated because I will split them. And then the last one is a number that the user will want me to select from those letters. So if you've got four letters, the user is going to ask me each time, take two out of the box. Well, take and do what? So. Let me read this for you. You are given a list of n lowercase English letters. So we know that for a given integer K, which is the one at the bottom, which was two in the example, you can select any K indices. I can select two indices in any combination, but here's the catch. Assume one based indexing in Python. We start counting from zero. This question is asking me to start counting from one. Fair enough. I will do that. If you tell me find the probability that at least one of the K indices selected will contain the letter a. So I need to calculate some probabilities here and make sure I am capturing the probability of each of those two taken out. One or two of them is a, I don't care if it is one or two, but at least one. All right, we know that the input consists of three lines. The first line contains the integer n, and the second line consists of n space separated letters, and the last one is the k. So let me make my screen back to normal, and I will write down these inputs from the user. So that should be pretty easy. n equals the input that comes from the user. But if you've seen my video that the link is up the top right for the input function, that gives us a string. We don't want a string. This is a number. So let's just convert that into an integer. That's going to be line one. Let me put the lines in front of the camera. Okay. I've done that one. Then I will receive a list of letters. I just want to call it list of letters. And that will be an input that comes from the user. So that's the input. But remember, they are letters in one box. I need to break them from this space. That's pretty easy. Let me just split them based on the space. And that will be it for now. And again, K will be the integer of the user input. That's not how we write input. All right. So let me run this and four, I will run that first example. So four, A space, A space, C space, D and two. I have captured the user for that example. Here comes iter tools. I need to import a function from iter tools. Let me do it up there because that's probably good practice in Python programming. I'll go there and I'll say from iter tools, import com 
If I press tab, I can see combinations. I will run that. I've got combinations ready. If I show you combinations now, it will say that it's a function from iter tools module. All right. So what does combination can really do for me? Let me start by using combinations like this. I will say list letters and K. Let's see if I can select two out of the list of letters. Um, I'll, I'm going to run it. It says, hey, 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 this is just a function. You need to convert it to something to be able to use it. All right, I will make it a list. If I make it a list and I can say, ta-da, very silently, because what I have done, I have taken AA, which is this AA. I have taken AC, which is this A and that C. AD, which is that A and that D and so forth. So I have a super useful function that does the job for me. All I need right now is to understand if there is at least one A there. So there is one A at least there. There is one A at least there. So we've got two, three, four, five, and we don't have it there. So if I say five out of six has got A in it, you can see that I can easily find that number HackerRank is expecting me. How do I do that very last bit? Um, let me delete that. Maybe if I go for combination in, did I save this anywhere? I didn't really save it anywhere. So I'll say com items. If I run that, now I can loop over it. For com in com items, can you print com? Oh yeah, you can print them one by one. Okay, and now that I'm iterating over them, can you print um, A in com? It can check if A exists in any of those combinations. And let me remind you what those combinations are. Here are the combinations. So it checks, does A exist here? It checks, does A exist here? It says true. Next one true, next one true. So it's essentially doing what I really wanted to do. So I don't really need to print this. Let's make this a condition. I will ask Python if A is in a comp that you are iterating on, you can add a new variable and add one to it because every time that A is there, you can say add one to it. I saw another one, I saw another one. But have I defined this count? I have not defined it. If I do not define it, Python will not be happy. And you may ask, hey, Amir, what exactly is this? This is a probably a bit of a fashionable way of writing code, and it's also a better and professional way of writing it. So if I did not write this, I could write count equals count plus one. That's not a very fancy way of writing, isn't it? Both of them do the same thing, exactly the same thing. But the first one is just fancier. It's probably nicer and it's more professional. So I'll just get rid of that. Now, if I run this and I print count, you will see that there are five of them. But here I've got a total number of how many? I can count it. I can say, what is the length of comp items? It will tell me that there are six of them. So if I did divide count by length of count items, which I will do right now, so divide that there, you will see that I've got 0 0.833, so many other things. I don't want to go more than three decimal points, or was that four decimal points? Output a single line consisting of the probability that at least one, and the answer must be correct up to three decimal places. So let me do some housekeeping here. I will keep this as a new probability. Probability, probability of A equals that right there. If I run that, and if I print probability of A, you will see that it's there. And now I will do a bit of formatting. So I will do this, do this, and this should give me the formatting that I just wanted. So all I did here was to limit this to three decimal points. So let's take this into HackerRank and see if HackerRank really likes this. What I will do, I'll just make this a bit smaller so that you can see what I'm copying. Copy that line. All you need to do is just copy and paste after that line. 
take the inputs from the user and then do your com items. I don't need to print it. I just need to paste it here. Do this line of for loop and then count the probability or calculate the probability, paste it here and the print with three decimal points. Let me just extend this, run that code and hope for the best. That one was successful, ta-da! But what I really need to do right now is to run more tests on this one. So there are 11 of them, all of them are successful and I think HackerRank is gonna say, congratulations, you've earned another 40 points. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and leave me a comment, ask me a question or any other question not relevant to this problem. I'm more than happy to help you. Thank you.